And now, stay tuned for the mystery program that is unique among all mystery programs. Because even when you know who is guilty, you always receive a startling surprise at the final curtain. In the Signal Oil program, The Whistler. Signal, the famous go-farther gasoline, invites you to sit back and enjoy another strange story by The Whistler. I am The Whistler, and I know many things, for I walk by night. I know many strange tales hidden in the hearts of men and women who have stepped into the shadows. Yes, I know the nameless terrors of which they dare not speak. And now for the Signal Oil Company, the Whistler's strange story, Man in the Storm. The storm had been raging for two days. A solid downpour, over-flooding the storm drains, inundating town after town, particularly Grove's Landing, where the fury of its violence seemed to center. The river, which usually wound around Grove's Landing so caressingly, had turned into an overflowing, uncontrollable force. The townspeople, lining the banks with hastily filled sandbags, had the assistance of a group of soldiers and army engineers. Engineers rushed to the area at the request of the governor, but it was a losing battle. The rushing floodwaters were winning, even now threatening to sweep away the town recreation center, a building placed precariously close to the river's edge. Some of the men were giving up in spite of the excited, shouted orders they received from one man who was working waist-deep in the mire, struggling tirelessly as if possessed. He kept on as the others withdrew. Almost failed to look up or listen as someone shouted to him over the tumult. But at last he did respond and waded in toward the bank. Reed! Reed, will you listen? Reed, the mayor! The mayor? Why isn't he down here fighting this thing, Cal? We could lick it if only everybody... Never mind, the mayor is here and he wants to see you right away. Oh? Yeah, he's across the road there in that army car. What's the deal? I don't know. The city engineer's with him and they're having some sort of meeting, I guess, with an officer from the army engineers. I better get over there then. Uh Uh-huh. Take my place, will you, Cal? We can whip this. Oh, maybe you can, Reed. I'm for waiting this storm out. It's too risky now. Go on, stay with it. Well, okay, okay, but just till you get back. Uh, Fools. Atta boy, Pete. Get that load of sandbags to him. Well, there you are, Reed. Uh, Mr. Mayor. Reed, it's Lieutenant Avery, Army Engineers. Lieutenant, Reed Gordon, our city treasurer. Lieutenant. How do you do? You know city engineer Hollister, of course? Hello, Hollister. You look kind of used up, Reed. No, I'm all right. Now, to get to the point quickly. Lieutenant Avery's been giving us some advice, Reed. A good advice, I feel. And we're prepared to take it. I just wanted you to know. Wanted me to know what? Well, I know how you're going to take this. I've been watching the fight you've been making out there, but... Well, Reed, the simple fact of the matter is that in... uh, Well, in Hollister and the lieutenant's opinion... They don't want us to give up here. I think it's the only thing to do, Mr. Gordon. Me too, Reed. We ought to move farther down the river. See, at a narrower point. But we can't. It's... It's like pushing the recreation hall into the river. We can't do that. These gentlemen feel that letting the rec- recreation building go, well, is the surest way to save the town. The town is a lot more important than the recreation building. Oh, I know how you feel about the recreation hall, Reed, but... It, but it, you're going to let them do this. Is that it? That's exactly it. I'm not letting anyone do anything that I don't think is for the best. They're qualified engineers, Reed, and after all... But that building is the town, Mayor Wilson. You know what it means, how the school kids save their nickels and dimes to help build it. We can't let it go like this. Well, we've got to abandon this position, Reed. Save all this effort and material for a spot where it will do some good. Check. Just give up. Let the recreation hall go into the river. Reed, we know how you feel. That hall was your baby, but uh, we haven't any choice. No? Well, go ahead then, Mayor. You may not have any choice, but I have. I'm going on with this right here. Uh, Reed, just a moment. Uh, Reed! Yes, Reed, you're going on with it. Not letting any of them stop you, prevent you from doing everything humanly possible 
to prevent the floodwaters from toppling the recreation building into the river. It isn't long before you find yourself virtually alone at the river's edge, doggedly struggling to drag the few remaining piles of sandbags into position. You work frantically for several hours until you feel as if you're going to drop. And then as you wade back through the waters to shore and drop down from exhaustion, you hear a familiar voice. Reed. Look up to find that your wife, Margaret, is at your side. Reed, please. You've got to give this up. Come home and get some rest. No, I'll rest right here. In a few minutes, I've got to tackle it again, Margaret. You've got to understand that. Don't you think everyone understands, dear? They know how you work to get the recreation building in the first place, but... Oh, Reed, it's no you. Maybe... Maybe you're right. And I'm worn out. Of course you are. Go home, dear, please. Everyone understands. Yeah. Yeah, I guess they do. All right, Margaret, I guess I'm licked. I'll see you back at the house. You feel beaten, don't you, Reed? And the thought of what it means creates a strange feeling of numbness, something not caused by your weariness. And driving through the flooded streets of Grove's Landing, you decide you've got to talk to someone. Get it all off your chest. And so, instead of going home, you pull up in front of an apartment building, get out of the car, and hurry upstairs. Reed. Hello, Claire. Come in, darling. Sit down. I'll get you a drink of something. You don't look well. No, I'm licked, Claire. Beat clean through. The river's caught up with me. What are you saying? Claire, you know that money we've been playing around with hasn't come entirely from my job as city treasurer. Honey, I... I don't know what you mean. Okay. Okay, so even as my secretary, there are things you don't know about. Claire? Huh? You've said that you love me. And I do. Sure, but how much? How much after I tell you about that recreation building, why I was down there fighting the river, trying to hold the flood back with my bare hands? I don't care, Reed. I don't care what you tell me. No? Well, Claire, that building's supposed to be fully insured. But if that building falls, Reed Gordon, the city treasurer, falls with it. Reed! Yeah, sure, you've guessed it. I never took out any insurance. I've been pocketing all the premiums since the day they laid the cornerstone. Oh, Reed, no! Yeah, and that's just part of it. If you ever take a good look at the books, they'll find other discrepancies, too. Lots of them. Reed. Do you still love me? Of course I do. Oh, don't worry, darling. We'll find a way out of this. Engine wear. It's one of the principal reasons drivers have to spend big sums of money having their motors overhauled. Engine wear. It's one of the principal reasons motors lose pep and power, get fewer miles per gallon of gas. Engine wear. It's one of the principal reasons cars gradually use more and more oil until eventually they become oil eaters. No wonder automotive and petroleum engineers for years have sought ways to reduce engine wear. And now at last, Signal reports startling success with an amazing new motor oil that reduces by 50% engine wear due to lubrication. That means your car can now keep its light new pep and power twice as long. It means you can now enjoy low oil consumption twice as long if your car isn't already an oil eater. So if you want to be good to your car and your pocketbook too, drain out that lazy old motor oil. Have a Signal dealer refill your crankcase this week with Signal Premium, the amazing new Signal oil that reduces engine wear due to lubrication 50%.
Yes, Reed. The storm, with its heavy rainfall, has swollen the river near Grove's Landing to the point where the town is seriously threatened. But more important, there is the dread danger that Grove's Hall, the recreation building, will topple into the floodwaters and be destroyed. Grove's Hall, the building you campaigned for five years ago, Reed, the building you helped design, the building upon which you were supposed to have taken out all coverage insurance. But as city treasurer, you were in a position to omit this item because you were so certain that nothing could happen to Groves Hall. But now the storm is reaching out to destroy the building and you. Back home alone, you can't think of any way to prevent it or the avalanche of investigation that would follow. Finally, you begin to see a way out. You stop pacing the floor and call your wife. Margaret. Yes, Reed. What about the recreation building? Have you heard anything? No, but don't worry. You've done all you can. Besides, the building is insured. Margaret, I... Yes, dear? Oh, nothing, nothing. You're right, of course. Uh, worrying about the building isn't going to help. If it's going down the river, well, it's going down the river, that's all. There's always a slim chance it won't. No, it's doomed, Margaret. Only a matter of hours, the... Important thing right now is the town. We've got to save it, and I, I should be doing my bit. Nonsense, dear. You haven't had any sleep in 36 hours. You need your rest. Oh, now, please, forget the river. Going back there I is... could help without going to the river. What do you mean? Margaret, I've got an idea. I'm going to drive down to Fairview. Now? But, Reed, it's 1 o'clock in the morning. Yes, I, I know, I know. Why on earth do you want to go to Fairview? Jess Morton, you remember? He owns a construction company. I've done him a favor or two in the past, and now it's his time to do one for me. I don't understand. I'm going to see if I can talk him into sending some of his heavy equipment up here. It's our one chance to save Gross Landing. Well, couldn't you phone him? Oh, you forget, Margaret. The lines are down. Perhaps they've been repaired. Let me try. No. No, never mind. I'd, I'd rather talk to Jess in person. But, dear, I... I'm leaving, Margaret. Right now. <laughs> You've made up your mind, haven't you, Reed? Yes. Suddenly it all became quite clear to you what you must do. It's your one chance now. You hurry from the house, drive into town through the heavy downpour, finally stop in front of Claire's apartment building, enter the front door and walk to her apartment and ring her doorbell. Who, who is it? Reed, let me in. Darling, what's the matter? The building hasn't... No. No, not yet. Oh. Well, what is it? I'm on my way to Fairview. Fairview? To see if I can talk my old friend Jess Morton into sending some heavy equipment up here. At least that's what I told Margaret. Oh? You have other plans? Yes. I just came to say goodbye, Claire. I'm leaving. Leaving? You mean... But not in the direction of Fairview. I'm headed north. By the time the building collapses and they get around to checking up on the insurance, I'll be miles away. And you came to say goodbye. Well, you won't have to. What? I'm going with you. Oh, now, wait a minute, I'm Claire. going. No, you don't have to, you know. You're, you're not involved in this thing in any way. I couldn't stay on here in Grove's Landing without you, Reed. Well, you don't know what you're letting yourself in for. I know about the insurance premiums you haven't paid, the city's books that won't bear investigation. What else is there to know? It isn't pretty, Claire. Ever hear of Donetti, Mario Donetti? The racquetball? Vaguely, yeah, but... I've... Well, I've done him favors, the big payoffs. I'm in up to my neck. When this thing breaks, he'll be gunning for me, too. He'll kill me on sight. Reed, why did you get... I hit? said it wasn't pretty. I'm going with you, Reed. No matter what, I have to be with you. Oh, you're wonderful, Claire. I didn't expect this. We'll make it all right. The two of us. We'll go somewhere far away. Oh, they'll never find us. Never. Okay. If you're sure. Now you better get your things. We haven't got much time. The whole town seems deserted. I hope it is. Wouldn't do if anyone saw us running out like this. No one's going to see us. They're all down at the river. I passed the city hall on the way over to your apartment. Black as pitch there. 
It's a good thing, too. What do you mean? Because I'm making a stop at the city hall, Claire. We're going to need some extra money, you and I. Oh, Reed, you wouldn't... What difference is a few more thousand dollars going to make now? After all I've done. Believe me, this money will mean more to us than it will to Groves Landing. Yeah, but it's risky, Reed. Sure it is. So is running away, but we're doing it because we have to. That is, I have to. It's not too late to change your mind, Claire. You know my answer, Reed. It'll never change. All right, darling. And don't worry. It won't take long to get the money out of the safe. And we'll be on our way. <laughs> You park on the dark and deserted side street for the city hall. Claire keeps the motor running while you use your key to open the side door. And once inside, you hurry along the familiar dark halls until you come to your own office. You take a flashlight from the top drawer of your desk, move for the wall safe, and quickly click off the combination. The flashlight leads you to the packet of bills you're looking for. Several thousand dollars, Reed. Enough to take you and Claire far away from Grove's Landing. You close the safe and rush back to the car. Everything all right, Reed? Perfect, darling. Now let's get out of town. Reed. Yeah? If, as you say, we're headed north, aren't you being a little careless? What do you mean? The bridge. We've got to cross it to get out of town, and there's a roadblock. Police checking all cars. They'd remember us. We're not going over the bridge. There's another way? The quarry. Upriver, about three miles. There's a big barge tied up there. It's used to haul trucks across the river. But how could We'll you... just drive the car onto the barge, get across the river, and we're on our way. What about the night watchman? Uh, he was down at the river when the others, when I left. Chances are he still is. And if he isn't? Well, we'll just have to take that chance. I wish this infernal rain would stop. Oh, don't let that bother you, Reed. Just think. Every minute we're getting farther from Grove's Landing. You and I, Reed. Oh, I like that. I don't care if it rains forever. <laughs> I guess you're right, Claire. We'll start all over. The three of us. Three of us? <laughs> you and I and the city's money. <laughs> of course. I'd almost forgot. Yes, it'll be wonderful. No more recreation buildings, no more... No more what, darling? There's a car following us. Looks like a state patrol car. Oh, no. Reed, you've got to drive fast. I can't. I'm right at the speed limit now. But they can't have found out about the money so soon. I don't know how, but they must have. He's gaining on us. Yes, I know, I know. Where did he come from? I don't know, but here he comes alongside. Keep your head now. It's okay, Claire. They drove right past us. The road to the quarry is narrow and muddy, and you're forced to drive carefully, slowly. When you arrive, the quarry seems deserted. You drive your car aboard the heavy steel barge, and then prepare to cast off. As you're trying to start up the motor... Come on, come on. Reed. What's the matter? Back there, the watchman's shack, a light. Yeah, he would have to come back. Hurry, Reed, hurry. Get it started. That's what I'm trying to do. Ah, there it goes. Hey, hey, you out there. Hurry, Reed, hurry. You breathe a sigh of relief as the heavy barge moves out into the river. That was close, wasn't it, Reed? A little too close. The night watchman might have ruined everything for you. The crossing takes only a matter of minutes. And then as you reach the other side, Claire drives the car off the barge. You shut down the motors. And as you do... Keep down! Are you all right? Yes, yes. Oh, let's get out of here. Oh, I didn't like those shots, Reed. I'm afraid old Pop Willis takes his job too seriously. He could have killed us. You don't think he recognized us? 
Or the car, do you? In this darkness? Of course not. Relax, honey. We're okay now. Like I should have dozed off. <laughs> <laughs> You've been sound asleep for over an hour. Where are we, darling? How about 75 miles away from Grove's Landing? Well, we have been traveling. Reed, it stopped raining. Uh-huh. Look up there. Stars are out. Oh, what do you know? Storm's over, huh? Yeah, it looks that way. At least in this region, it is. How about some coffee, I huh? love it. We'll pull into that place up ahead there. Fine. Reed, about the storm. Yeah? Do you suppose by any chance the recreation building is... I've been wondering the same thing. I'll have to be sure, very sure. Well, come on, Claire. Howdy. Good morning. Uh, what'll it be, folks? Uh, coffee. Oh, would you like some breakfast, darling? Nope. Coffee will be fine. Right. Well, looks like she's all over with, huh? Storm, I mean. Yeah, yeah, it looks that way. According to the Weather Bureau, it is. No? Yep. Heard it on the news about 15 minutes ago. River ought to start going down pretty soon. Well, that is good news. Yep. Sure had folks up and down this valley worried for a while, it did. Things sure look bad. Yeah, so I understand. Mm, yeah. Here's your cream. Oh, thanks. Funny thing about that storm... It real sudden, like. Goes out same way. Just like that. Um, do you have a telephone, him? Yep. Right back there. Help yourself. Thanks. Operator. Um, uh, operator, would you give me 170 Groves Landing, please? Deposit 35 cents for three minutes, please. Okay. Hello, Margaret? Oh, Reed, where are you? On the highway. I just heard the news about the storm. It's really over, eh? Yes, it's all over. And you don't have to worry about your precious building anymore. The mayor called me only a few minutes ago. He and the city engineer went down to look it over. It's still standing in the dangerous path. Well, that's fine, Margaret. I guess I'll start back home now, huh? Be careful on the road. Don't worry. I, I will, Margaret. Goodbye. Well? Everything's fine. Just fine, Claire. Reed, you mean the... I mean the building's okay. The danger's passed. We can go back to Grove's Landing now. Oh, Reed. It's the money. The money you took from the safe tonight. You'll have to get it back somehow. Yeah, don't worry about that. I'll stop by City Hall when we get back to town. Nobody will ever know we borrowed the money even for a little while. We're okay, Claire. There's not a thing to worry about. Not a thing. Is engine wear causing your expensive motor to wear out twice as fast as necessary? It is if you're still using lazy motor oils that merely lubricate. Here's what I mean. In amazing new Signal Premium motor oil, special properties are engineered into the oil through the marvels of modern chemistry. As a result, new Signal Premium not only reduces engine wear due to lubrication 50%, but also protects your motor in all these important extra ways. One keeps oil rings clean and free. Two, controls and reduces harmful engine deposits such as carbon, gum, and varnish. Three, prevents sticking of hydraulic valve lifters. Four, stops acid corrosion and rust. Best of all, new Signal Premium Motor Oil gives you all this extra protection at no increase in price. Good reason to get your next oil change at a Signal service station. Change this week to the amazing new Signal Oil that reduces engine wear due to lubrication 
50 percent. Engine wear, engine wear, engine wear, engine wear. Well, Reed, the storm is over, and its threat to the recreation building is gone with it. The panic within you is gone, too, isn't it? And you're certain you're in the clear now, free to return to Grove's Landing. But you've made up your mind to see to it that the building is going to be properly insured from now on. You're not going to take another chance, are you? Go through the torture of the past two days again. No, you're going to play it safe. Somehow, you'll even dissolve your connection with Mario Donetti, even though it will mean losing that uh, easy money. But a man in your position as city treasurer, well, it shouldn't be too difficult to arrange another profitable sideline. It's almost dawn when you arrive at Grove's Landing. Drop Claire off at her apartment. Then, on your way home, you see the lights are on in the mayor's office, and you decide to drop in for a chat. Well, good morning, Mayor. Morning, Reed. Just get back from Fairview? <laughs> yes. Good. Glad you dropped by. Got to leave for the county seat in a little while. Want to check our insurance with you. Huh? I- insurance? What insurance? Oh, that's right. That's right. You've been out of town. Yeah, I guess you didn't come in by the river. Or else you'd have seen for yourself. Now, you didn't know that... Reed, I... I don't know how to tell you this. Just, just take a look out the window. The recreation building. Yeah. Toppled over into the river. A total loss. But what happened? I talked to Margaret on the phone around three this morning, and she said that... Didn't happen shortly after four. But the storm, it was all over. Oh, it wasn't a storm, Reed. You see, last night, someone stole a quarry barge a few miles up the river. Took it across. When they left it, they didn't tie it up properly. The barge? Yeah. Got away. Picked up momentum on its way downstream. Finally crashed into the pilings, supporting the recreation building. And toppled it into the river. Whoever's responsible will pay for this, Reed. I promise you. Now, let's take a look at that insurance. Let that whistle be your signal for the Signal Oil program, The Whistler, each Sunday night at this same time. Throughout the seven Pacific Coast states, the same independently operated signal service stations who help you go farther with signal gasoline are now prepared to reduce your engine wear due to lubrication 50% with amazing new Signal Premium Motor Oil. Why not let a friendly signal dealer change your motor oil tomorrow? Featured in tonight's story were Bill Foreman, William Conrad, Virginia Agnello, Gene Tatum, Hal Dawson, Herb Litton, and Charles Calvert. The Whistler was produced and directed by George W. Allen, with story by Adrian John Doe, music by Wilbur Hatch, and was transmitted to our troops overseas by the Armed Forces Radio Service. The Whistler is entirely fictional, and all characters portrayed on The Whistler are also fictional. Any similarity of names or resemblance to persons, living or dead, is purely coincidental. Remember at the same time next Sunday, another strange tale by The Whistler. Marvin Miller speaking for the Signal Oil Company. Stay tuned now for Our Miss Brooks starring Eve Arden, which follows immediately over most of these stations. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs>